Hello, everyone. My name is Leia Doriel. I am the founder and executive director of Oceanic Global, the proud partner of United Nations World Oceans Day since 2019. It is an honor to be joining the United Nations Office of Legal Affairs, Division of Ocean Affairs, and Law of the Sea, once again for this year's theme, Awaken New Depths, and to be here with you all today. It is my privilege to introduce the President of the United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency, Mr. Dennis Francis, for our opening remarks. Good morning. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to join you in celebrating World Oceans Day, particularly under this year's apt theme of awakening new depths. Indeed, there is so much still to learn about the oceans, and importantly, to reverse the damage being caused by our precious to our precious lifeline resource. With our sights set on the 2025 Oceans Conference in Nice, the Ocean Action event underway in San Jose, Costa Rica, and the preparatory meeting in New York next month, we must urgently reflect on what we can do better to restore and sustainably manage the rich resources of oceans. Our answers also take on added importance as we look forward with anticipation to the Summit of the Future in September 2024, where world leaders are expected to forge a global consensus and action, among others, for conservation and sustainable use of our oceans and seas. Oceans are the origin of all life on Earth covering more than 70% of our planet, offering daily subsistence for more than 35% of global population, especially in developing countries, and generating 60 million jobs around the world, oceans provide countless benefits to, humanity, to humanity's existence. Moreover, oceans are our strongest allies against climate change, absorbing 25% of all carbon dioxide, making them the greatest carbon sink on the planet. At the same time, oceans suffer due to the climate crisis and myriad types of pollution generated by socially irresponsible human activity. The consequences of our bad choices have been dire, seen in increasingly rising sea levels, proliferating extreme weather events and maritime heat waves that have led to coral reef degradation, ocean acidification, and other imbalances, also compounded by illegal, unreported, and underregulated fishing and extractive activities on the seabed. It is our joint responsibility to course correct and recommit to sustainably manage the ocean's precious resources so as to ensure their availability intergenerationally. On this front, some progress has been made. Now that the agreement on the conservation and sustainable use of ma marine biological diversity of areas beyond national jurisdiction has been agreed, the General Assembly has established a preparatory commission to bring about its entry into force. Further, I am encouraged that negotiations on a legally binding treaty on plastic pollution are proceeding well, a treaty of critical importance if we are to achieve success in significantly improving the health and sustainability of our oceans. Excellencies, in these pursuits, we would do well to follow the lead of small island developing states, which are at the vanguard of ocean conservation efforts and advocacy worldwide. Their strength was admirably on display when nine SIDS, 
led by Vanuatu, won a successful ruling from the International Tribunal of the Law of the Sea that carbon emissions can be considered a sea pollutant. <clears throat> this historic ruling obliges countries to mitigate the effects of carbon emissions on the oceans, potentially creating an important basis for future climate jurisprudence. But this is not simply a win for SIDS alone. It is a win for the environment, for our oceans and seas, and certainly for all of humanity. Its practical weight was recently reflected at the fourth international conference on SIDS, which I had the privilege of attending, and where world leaders adopted the Antigua and Barbuda agenda for SIDS, addressing various aspects of ocean health from conservation and sustainable use of marine resources to biodiversity loss and plastic pollution. Building on this success at my initiative, the General Assembly has also taken decisive action to build momentum for urgent targeted redress, notably through its decision to convene a high-level plenary meeting on the threats posed by sea level rise on September 25th, 2024. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me end on another positive note that I am pleased to have announced yesterday the appointment of Their Excellencies Tanya Seraphim Yvonne Ramulado and James Martin Larson, permanent representatives of Cabo Verde and Australia respectively, as co-facilitators for the intergovernmental consultations mandated in Resolution 78-128 of 18 December 2023. Their mandate is to fulfill, sorry, to facilitate development of a brief, concise, action-oriented, and intergovernmentally agreed declaration to be concluded by May 1, 2025 for adoption by consensus at the high-level 2025 United Nations Conference to support the implementation of Sustainable Development Goal 14. That is, to conserve and sustainably use the oceans and seas and marine resources for sustainable development. On this World Oceans Day, let us redouble our efforts to support and advance ocean action, build much needed capacity in SIDS, and other developing countries, and promote initiative financing, innovative financing solutions that drive transformation and scale up resilience. Together we can navigate towards a blue future, where through effective management, vibrant, ecologically rich oceans make their maximum contribution to peace prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for underscoring the ocean's vital importance, particularly for small island developing states, and for setting the scene to this year's programming. As we are all together celebrating World Oceans Day, states are meeting in Costa Rica for a high-level event on ocean action in the lead-up to the 2025 United Nations Ocean Conference in Nice, France. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Miguel de Sopa Suarez, Under Secretary General for Legal Affairs and the United Nations Legal Council, His Excellency, Mr. Arnoldo André Tinoco, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Costa Rica, and His Excellency, Mr. Hervé Birville, Secretary of State of the Sea and Biodiversity of France, who will be joining us for virtual remarks. Thank you. 
Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a very happy World Oceans Day from San Jose, Costa Rica. Let me thank you all for showing your support to the ocean by attending the United Nations World Oceans Day celebration today, either virtually or in person. I would also like to express my gratitude and that of my office to all our inspiring speakers for their contributions to awaken new depth of our understanding, commitment, and collaboration for the ocean. Thanks also go to the judges of the annual photo competition, to the contest curator, Alan Coilarts, and to the dive photo guide for facilitating the competition and to everyone who has submitted entries this year. Moreover, we are very grateful to our production partner, Oceanic Global, with whom we have had the great pleasure again to organize this year's celebration. I am here in San Jose to attend the high-level event on ocean action entitled Immersed in Change, convened by the government of Costa Rica, and the event is held in preparation of the 2025 United Nations Ocean Conference, which will take place next June in Nice, France, under the theme Accelerating Action and Mobilizing All Actors to Conserve and Sustainable Use the Ocean. Today's high-level event and the Ocean Conference next year offer important opportunities to take stock of the implementation of Sustainable Development Goal 14, Life Below Water, and to spur action to achieve all its targets by 2030. I'm delighted to be joined today by the co-hosts of the 2025 United Nations Ocean Conference, represented by Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Arnoldo Andre Tinoco, and by the Secretary of State for the Sea and Biodiversity, Mr. Hervé Belleville. Excellencies, may I invite you to share with our audience in New York and around the world your vision on the significance of the current high-level event, the 2025 Nice Ocean Conference, and their role in awakening new deaths for commitment and action for the ocean. Minister. Thank you, Under Secretary Serpa. It is our pleasure to welcome you in Costa Rica, a small coastal country but a big ocean state, where we invited the world to join us at the high-level event on ocean action, immersed in change this 7th and 8th of June. So far, the event has provided a platform for innovation and in-depth dialogue, as well as for devising and scaling up practical solutions for critical issues. These include the blue sustainable economy, plastic pollution, sustainable fisheries, and the implementation of global agreements, all integral to our call of peace for the ocean. All these efforts are directed towards enhancing our ambition, ambitions for the third United Nations Ocean Conference, UNOC, and the excitement and commitment of over 1,500 participants this weekend underscores the growing momentum towards Nice next year. Our objectives for the UNOC are clear, to accelerate action by engaging all stakeholders and to leverage scientific, technical, financial, and innovative solutions for SDG 14 in order to protect and conserve the ocean and its invaluable marine ecosystems for future generations. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Under Secretary Serpa. Thank you, Minister André Tinoco. It's a pleasure to be here in this beautiful country, Costa Rica. The ocean faces a triple crisis, climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. Yet, it sustains over 3 billion people worldwide, our planet's lifeblood. As the world's second largest maritime territories, spanning the Pacific, Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean, France must and will unite with all nations to protect our ocean and meet this century's defining challenge. Indeed, we are honored to be co-hosting UNOC 3 with Costa Rica in June 2025 to set new milestones for the protection of marine ecosystems and strengthen ocean governance. 
This conference aims to accelerate all ocean-related United Nations and multilateral processes. First, the swift ratification of the BBNG agreement. Second, progress on the 30 by 30 biodiversity goal. Third, extending our coalition for the precautionary principle on deep sea mining. And fourth, celebrating the forthcoming treaty to end plastic pollution and reduce plastic production. Believing that effective change demands science-based public policies, we will organize a scientific congress alongside the conference. Recognizing that coastal population, especially indigenous people, are the first to suffer climate change, we will convene a special summit on region and cities affected by rising sea level. Committed to inclusive ocean governance, we will host a forum on the blue economy in finance in Monaco. Dear friends, I look forward to meeting you all in Nice in June 2025 for this summit of ocean action so that we can collectively work toward a healthier ocean. Thank you very much for those inspiring words, which highlight that today's high-level event and the Ocean Conference, similar to World Oceans Day, are not mere occasions, but calls to action. And the United Nations looks forward to working with you in making the 2025 Ocean Conference a meaningful milestone for the ocean and all who depend on it. One thing is clear, we cannot do this alone. We will need the support from everyone attending today's United Nations World Ocean Day celebration and from all those working on ocean issues around the world. As the previous United Nations Ocean Conference concluded, the ocean is our future, our responsibility. Let us come together to live up to that responsibility and reawaken our commitment to the ocean. Thank you. Thank you for those remarks and commitments. We are gathered here today in celebration of World Oceans Day to recognize that we live on a beautiful, delicate, resilient, biodiverse blue planet and that it is only with respect and harmony with the ocean that we can restore balance to our natural world. We are living in one of the most turbulent times, and as a result, our human impact on the environment and climate, nature and the oceans are responding loudly. We know the facts, but we are still not listening. And we can all feel the subsequent polarization and desperation around us. Once again, we're living through the hottest decade on record. Global temperatures have exceeded 1.5 degrees of warming on almost a daily basis. And in the last six months alone, we're experiencing the fourth largest coral reef bleaching event in history. What is happening in the ocean is not isolated to the ocean. It is impacting all aspects of our planet. No matter where we are, we are all experiencing and witnessing rapid environmental and social decline. And with all the demands and conflicting priorities of today's world, it can be hard to create the capacity to put the ocean first. But as the ocean sustains all life on Earth, prioritizing a thriving ocean is fundamental to ensuring a thriving planet. The global narrative of today is one of doom and gloom. In our messaging around climate and the environment, it is so important not to only be realistic about the possibilities of our future, but to also create space for alternate ways of doing, of being, of creating, to equip ourselves with knowledge-backed tools that empower us to imagine different futures. To pose the question, what if we got it right? When it comes to the ocean, only an approximately 10% of it has been explored, meaning there is endless potential out there that is yet to be discovered. This year's theme, Awaken New Depth, is one of opportunity, of hope, in a collapsing world. It challenges us to transcend the status quo of how things have been done 
and empowers us to find new ways of conserving the ocean's decline and these delicate ecosystems, changing our extractive practices to refine how we as humans operate within this larger role. As the President of the General Assembly mentioned, the particular depths that we'll explore today, commitment, compassion, understanding, and collaboration, are meant to open minds, ignite senses, and to inspire possibilities, to motivate widespread momentum for the ocean in the face of an increasingly desensitized world. At Oceanic Global, our mission is to reconnect humanity to the ocean as the beating heart of the planet and to provide tangible solutions and blueprints for coexisting in harmony with the natural world. Our programs from education and campaigns, our volunteer hubs, community grants, across industry blue standard, and our global convenings, such as today's event, works together to not only meet the ocean's immediate needs and to protect ecosystems and communities in need, but to also provide solutions at every level of society to reshape systems and to restore balance for the long term. Let us remember we are all part of this beautiful web of life. And like all life on Earth, our survival depends on the ocean. During today's programming, I would like to invite you to reflect on how you can change to support a thriving ocean. It's vital that we translate our commitments and its potential into real momentum and tangible action. There is no time to wait. It is now an honor to introduce Giselle World, who is deeply connected to the water, to share her magic through a song called Yamanja. Sagrada Agüita bendita Purificando Thank you water Thank you water You purify us You nurture us you give us life. La socama de agüita sagrada. Yana wana, yana wana. Yo soy la hija del agua de mi mamá y emanja las sirenas son mis hermanas llamándome a cantar mamá y mai y emanja
Yo soy la hija del agua de mi mamá y Yemanjá. Las sirenas son mis hermanas llamándome a cantar. Ma El mar me llama, la luna me canta, el sol me da fuerzas para cuidar el agua. El mar me llama, la luna me canta, el sol me da fuerzas para cuidar el agua. Mamá, mamá, ya